Hey, Sydney, so, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? So I understand that you are a maths teacher and a very proud nerd. That's absolutely. what I have down for your bio. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I may have entirely, I mean, I've just watched the last few um, presenters and this is going to be a radical change of pace. I'm going to be doing some tricks for seven to 12 year olds. Um, it's prime time in Australia. So they'll, and also I hope my family are watching who are all over there. So hi all. Um, this is a basically I'm hoping to do some really simple tricks for them, uh, younger students, and looking at, hopefully, how they work. Um, should we go ahead and do the first one? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I have a deck of cards ready, as you requested. Oh, fantastic. Hang on. Let me change um, my video so that you can see. Oh, I'm not very competent. Yep, there we go. That seems to work. And how's the glare looking, Sid? Sydney? Uh, seems all right. If you want to show a card, we can better evaluate that. Um, that's all right. But if people in the chat mention that it's uh, unclear, I'll let you know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right. So can you, um, I asked you to prep a deck, give it a shuffle and choose a card. It can be anything you like the look of. And then you look at it, but don't tell me. Okay. Right, I have chosen a card, and I believe this should be kept secret from the audience, right? Yeah, I'm going to choose a card as well. I'm going to have that one, because that looks a good one. I'll just leave it there. Okay, okay, so this is a really, really lovely basic trick. I want you to start by considering the number on your card, because it'll be between one to nine, because you took out all the higher cards earlier to make this trick easier for me. So uh, take the number and double it. Okay, you may, may want your calculator to hand for the next bit. I've already it's, got it. <laughs> good. Next bit's add to Sydney. Oh, that was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and if you could take your answer and multiply that by five, that would be awesome. Okay. Okay. Now, I would like you to, with the answer that you currently have, take away three. Okay. Okay. So you've... Now, hopefully, got a two-digit number. Can you tell me what it is? And then I will tell you what your card is. Okay, I got 47. 47. So I really hope that your card is a four. It is indeed a four. And I have the seven. Together, we've made 47. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is a really simple trick. But I think, it, you know, I work with some primary school children. And they love this kind of thing. Um, when you can do maths that shows um, that, that does something uh, su 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 surprising. They really love it. And I also have then the chance to try and explain it to them. So this is what we got you to do. I'm hoping that this reads okay. Um, we got you to pick a card and then you had a number and now you started with the number four. So if I take my pen, I'll just write that down. You started with four. If we double it, we get eight. And then I said, add two. So if I write that down as eight, add two. Okay, that stays like that. Uh, that's obviously 10. But I said times by five. And now this is where a little property of maths comes in, um, where you can distribute the multiplication so eight times five is 40 and two times five is 10. And if we add those together, we get five times 10, which is 50. I love that. That's so cool. What's really interesting here, and this is the way the trick works, is that if we start with the four, we end up with 10 times four, add 10. Okay, I'm going to break this down because I know... <laughs> I know that most of the audience on YouTube at the minute really know this stuff, but there are people who will be watching it later who just might benefit from me going through it slowly. So I'll try it again. I've taken the four and I've times it by two and then times by five. I've doubled it and then times by five. The four, if you double it, then times by five, that's the same as timesing by 10. So I've ended up with four times 10. I've also taken the two. And I've times that by five and two times five is always 10. So we've ended up with 
10 times the number you started with plus 10, which is 50. Uh, that's really helpful for my next part of the trick, because now when I take away a one digit number from 50, we're going to end up with 40 something, which is what I, which is your card. So the four at the, in the tens column is going to give you your card. I'm, I find that really pleasing. Okay. On the other side, I've got to work out how to get my card. So I was using number bonds to 10. This is a really big deal for younger children. So if you're doing the teaching, it really helps to have something like this to um, engage them. So I did 10 take away the number on my card. Now I had um, seven on my card, I think, which meant that the number I should be taking away is three. So when I do 10 um, take away seven, I get the three, 50 take away three, is 47. The trick works. It's genius. And it works every time with any number. Okay. <laughs> I hope that I think that went quite well. <laughs> I hope that that's really clear. I'm sure that if you've got any questions, you can ask me. Yeah, I think that that was a great explanation. Um, several people have said that you have incredibly good upside down writing skills. So I think uh, that's worth noting. <laughs> four years at teacher training college, you do learn something. <laughs> the two two main things were writing on the board and writing upside down. <laughs> um, this isn't a question in the chat, but just a question for myself to you. Would you know another way to do this trick, even if it'd be more complex with having face cards in the deck? Um, the only reason for missing out the face cards is because it becomes harder to explain why a jack is um, a jack is eleven, a queen is twelve and king is 13 it absolutely works the same and but also it makes the reveal less convincing because if you've got a king when you reveal a king and a and i you know it doesn't look like 13 but it absolutely works for any number and there's no reason at all why you have to limit it to the ones with a deck of cards it's just a nice way of um it's just a nice way of showing the reveal it'll work with any value at all any integer value, sorry. Um, if you start doing decimals, things get a bit confusing. And certainly it's a bit <laughs> a bit hard for primary students. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it must be a lot of fun for uh, younger kids, but I mean, I still think probably some of the older people here enjoy it as well. <laughs> well, I hope so. Um, so can we just um, go back to, remember we had chat this morning, you were talking about your um, memory tricks that you use for the blind solves then um, uh, yeah. can you talk can you talk to me quickly about that because I've been doing some practicing and uh, so I've got a, I've got a different trick to show you next uh sure do you just want me to talk about three by three blind solving or well what? okay right sorry to take over the hosting things could you tell me could you like explain what a blind solve is first of all and then how you do it Sure. All right. So for people in the dark, uh, Patty and I had talked earlier today um, about me and doing Rubik's Cube stuff when we were practicing his trick. And right now he would like for me to explain a bit about blinding a cube. So essentially when you work to blind solve a cube, you um, pick it up and memorize it one piece at a time um, and build a sequence of letters on your blindfold and then recall that sequence of letters in order to solve the cube. Um, I can continue going on. I just don't want to take away from your section. No, <laughs> no, we're, we're, we've we've got plenty of time. Um, how do you memorize the um, how do you memorize the pattern? Because you said um, that you start with the cube and you assign each thing a letter, and yes. then how do you build the memory of that? All right. So essentially, um, I start with uh, you know this piece here, and this piece for me would be represented by the letter L, and then this piece because it it, it would shoot to here would be represented by the letter G. So I might picture that L and G as a log, maybe just a, a wooden log. Then I have E and I. I might think of Einstein, um, either my cat named Einstein or Albert Einstein, whichever you prefer. <laughs> and then N and O. Um, just some image to image to uh, you know represent that maybe eggnog or something like that, okay. um, and just continue doing that for the entire cube. Oh, that's really cool. So you end up with like um, um, a picture um, going through a like. Do you use the rooms idea, like the memory palace for Sherlock Holmes? 
Yes. Uh, so I typically start in my bedroom with, you know, my bed and I go clockwise around my room to my desk, to my curtains, to my TV stand. You, you all can't see it, but I'm pointing to those spots <laughs> in my room and I build that image and then I work to recall it. And yeah, I start in a specific order so I don't fall out of order. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. So I'm going to try and learn what you've just said and try and do that in a trick. Okay. Okay, go for it. Now, I've not practiced this one as at, at, at all, really. So if this goes wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, but <laughs> um, I literally, from our conversation earlier today and watching Zoe's trick, the first trick up, I don't know if you saw it, where she memorized the 40 coin flips. I did, and I was actually practicing it. I have notes from practicing it earlier. <laughs> oh, I tried. It's just so hard. I'm, I mean, you know, having that mental flexibility is um, incredible. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to try this trick. I can memorize, I think, about half the deck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go through the deck really slowly so that I can memorize it. This would also have the advantage of dragging out my section so that we don't end up running short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, um it, it 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 would be better if I could talk and, and, and memorize at the same time. But unfortunately, I, I'm lacking the talent to do that. All right. Well, I just want to say, hopefully my talking will distract you. I will be incredibly impressed if you manage to memorize half the deck this quickly, because I practice memory sports and it takes me about an hour to do a deck memorization. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm fifth, counting half a deck. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, right now I think that's it. Okay, and yeah, I'm happy. Okay, I've got half the deck. That's about as much as I can do. So now what I'm going to try and do is choose a random number and using the cards is probably a good way to choose a random number so what i'm going to do is put down uh the top three cards just like that so we've got uh the three of diamonds four of hearts and the queen of hearts helpful that means that i don't have to remember those ones okay um i'm just going to do some more maths um things very high level stuff. What I'm going to do again is add three, take three away from 10 and put down that many cards. That would be seven. Okay. You can check that on the calculator for me if you, if, 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 if you're concerned. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now again, four away from 10 is six. So I get another six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the queen is um, already 10, so I, I'm not going to put any more cards down. Okay, so now it's time for my incredible prediction. And I'm going to recall that the 17th, that's three and four and 10, the 17th card in the deck now will be the five of spades. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm ever so slightly concerned now because, um, like I say, I've, 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 not really been very good at this. 17 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm getting anxious. I don't know about anybody else. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Um, <sighs> five clubs. Oh, I got it. I'm very, very happy with myself. <laughs> that was very good <laughs> thank you <laughs> i i'm i'm um have to admit to being um incredibly pleased that worked because uh, <laughs> i've done it about six times and it's worked once previously so anyway there is a trick i obviously didn't or wasn't able to do your incredible mental trick of memorizing all the cards all i did was memorize one card Okay, can I show you how the trick works? Yes, absolutely. We'd, I think we'd all love to see that. Okay. <laughs> um, so 
what I did is I was counting through. I went through half the deck and I really and truly didn't care about the first six cards. I only memorized the seventh card that came up. That's the only one I was caring about. And the rest of the time, I was just counting out to make sure that I got to 26 cards, which is half the deck. So hang on, how many? That's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Um, so I've counted out the 26 cards and I've left the one that we're interested in the other way up so we can see it in the deck. Okay. All right. All right. So I then turned the cards over and put them on the side of my cards here. And it's important that I turned them over because now the card that I chose is in the 33rd position and the deck. Basically we had 26 cards here and then some, what did we say? Seven underneath it. I've lost the card. How have I lost the card? I turned it over on purpose. Oh yeah, 26 there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards there. 26 add seven is 33. So all I have to do now is convince you and everybody else watching that I want to randomly generate the number 33. So what I did, I said, choose any three cards. So I'm using these cards and then I added more and I chose to add another, well, none to that one. I've chose to add eight to this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I chose one more to this one to make it up to 10. So as you can see here, I've dealt out how many cards? Um, one, two, three, add, there's another eight, three add eight. I can definitely do that, that's 11. And another one, 12 cards. I've got 12 cards out. So I need to get another uh, 12 cards, 33 take away 12 is 22, 21, sorry. And that's 21 there. So it's giving me the number because every time I do this, these piles will total 11, the number of cards plus the number that I deal down it comes to 11 and so I can deal this through. And when I get to the 21st card, you'll see that it's the one that we chose earlier, the seven of clubs, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can't see that, <laughs> That's sorry, do that again. I'm total professional. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now we're into the ones that I went through before. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Twenty-first card is the seven of clubs, just as we required. I love this trick because it doesn't require any actual skill, which is good because I don't have any. <laughs> well, that's why you have to pretend to have memorization skills, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I'm pretending. There's no way that I could memorize all of those cards. I mean, how long does it take you? You, you do these things, actually, don't you? You can do actually memorizing a deck. Yes. Uh, to memorize the deck would take me about an hour. Uh, that's, that's a little bit more challenging than just numbers. Um, so also, I've noticed a lot coming up in the chat, people complimenting your accent. I don't know if you've seen that, but I, I tend to agree with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's only all right. So I have a Bristol accent, a gentle Bristol accent, and um, it's generally considered to make me sound thick in Brit in Britain. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's the equivalent of like a Kentucky or um, one of those deep South accents that makes you sound. I don't know. Is is there an accent that make that is generally considered to sound a bit farmer yokel? Um. None that immediately come to mind. <laughs> well, let's go with let's go with. Um, I sound like a hillbilly. <laughs> that's the exact opposite of how you sound to americans <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, and some people say you have an australian r again that's um 
related to my accent, the Bristol accent has an elongated R. And if I was talking properly, uh, if I was doing a um, full Bristolian, there would be extra L's at the end of any vowel sounded words. So if I had an idea of how to do this work, I'd just go ahead and do it, look, innit? <laughs> so, also, Bristolians tend to speak quite quick, which I'm trying not to. <laughs> so, um, I go on. Oh, I was gonna, since we're on the topic of accents of all things, um, I remember when I was at the Maths Jam last year, um, I was with somebody who I believe actually was from Bristol. And I said to my friend who I was staying with in the UK, I like their accent. And they said that I was insane for doing so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, at least it's not a Birmingham accent. That's the only thing I'm going Oh, it, also Birmingham, Birmingham as well. They said <laughs> that I shouldn't like that accent. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's, there's, there's always somebody who's in a worse position and it's usually Brummies, right? Do you want me to do one more? I have an, I have two more stupid tricks, and if we have time, I'd well, like they're to... They're not stupid, and I think we'd love to see some more tricks. <laughs> okay, so um, this next one is um, a, a, a little bit different than the, than, than the one that I've just done. Um, I'll just go to the webcam so that we can see these. First of all, I need to um, just choose some cards. I'm just going to choose uh, the face cards and aces, and uh, face cards and aces are the kings, queens, jacks, and obviously the aces. So just take a second to go through and do these. Um, again, my lack of skill with cards is showing up here as I clumsily go through sorting out the deck. Right, that'll do. So this is um, a pretty silly little trick, which again i really love working on with the kids there's no actual maths in this it's just for fun so i'm going to take all of the aces and i'm going to put them down into four piles face down so sometimes tell a stupid story about the teachers so that's the maths teachers we can tell their maths teachers because they're the aces okay and then along come the the kings that's the senior management team they come along and they join the party. And next, along come all the PE teachers. And they get in there. This is break time at, at my school. This is how it looks. We'll go into little groups and start chatting and having coffee in the staff room. Lastly, the geography teachers, because they got lost. Right. <laughs> okay. So stupid story is really not important, but we'll, keep, we'll stick with it. And then the headmaster comes in and goes, what are you lot all doing here? So everybody jumps into a massive pile, scrambles up and round a couple of times like there's a fire alarm. And then everyone goes back to their classrooms, all back to the right rooms. <laughs> okay, so that one is pretty stupid, right? I love that. Well, you say there's no maths, but it looks like a basic cycles involved, at least. It is. It's absolutely. It's a cycles question. It's a cycles one. So when I put them out, I put them into the orders, as you spot it. And yeah, just like you said, Sydney, they are in that cycle like this. So when I put them and mix them together, I didn't obviously mix them. Oh, I didn't mix them. I just put them back so that they're all in the orders. Ace, uh, so queen, king, jack, ace, queen, king, jack, ace throughout. And when I mixed, um, I didn't actually change the order at all. Jack, ace, queen, king, jack, ace, queen, king. And I can do it as many cuts as I like. And the order will always stay the same. <laughs> <laughs> so the cycle's always there. And we can then lay them out and they come out in order and it looks so impressive and there's no sleight of hand, no skill and just looks awesome. I think anyway. And I think that telling the story about the teachers makes all the difference. 
<laughs> well, it's definitely the story that makes a lot of tricks, and that's definitely a cute little story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, look at that. We're not doing too badly on time. Um, I have, if if everybody's cool with that, I've got one more trick, but um, it's only going to take a few more minutes, and I don't think I'd like to explain it because um, I reckon that people can work out how to do it without... Actually, should, should we go through and then see if you can work it out? Uh, sure, I might make a fool of myself, but absolutely. Um, no, that doesn't seem very likely, to be honest with you. Okay, this is um, this is a, this is a trick that um, a, a colleague at school showed me, which I I've been trying to master. It's a little bit harder, and he can do it really well. Um, okay. I can't. I can't. We should have got him on. He's just basically better than me at all of this. He's better at maths. He's better at the card tricks. The kids like him. I mean, we, we, I, we've, we've got the wrong person. But I bet you have the better accent. So it's a, it's a no-brainer who to pick. That's true. He's from Southampton. So he sounds like, um, God knows what, he sounds like a sad cockney. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's put the little thing back on here. Okay. So I've got... Um, the cards here and Sydney I'm, I'm going to go through I'd like you to say s s stop and choose some cards we're just going to ch ch oh excuse me a sec we're just going to st st stop <coughs> on some um, random cards so I'd like you to pick some so you <coughs> you say stop when you're ready okay All right. that stop. one okay yep. that one I'd like that one your turn. Stop. Okay, cool. Uh, ooh, all red cards. I wonder what the chances of that are. Somebody in the chat's Stop. probably already... Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> I'm having that one. Okay, just fan them out so we can see them. Okay, you'll go. Uh, stop. Okay. Um, I'll have that one. You'll go again. Uh, stop. Stop. Oh, God, I'm glad you said stop then because we're just about to run out. Okay, one more, that one. Okay, let me just shuffle these all around. Is there a card? Can you see them all? Yeah. Is there a card that stands out for you? Is there one you want to pick? Um, uh, the Seven of Spades. Seven of Spades. Okay, now I was convinced. I was certain that you were going to choose one of the picture cards. But okay, Seven of Spades. So let's put that there, shuffle up the rest here. As you can see, my excellent card handling skills come to the fore again. So I've put the cards into the deck, and I'm just going to cut a couple of times to mix up the deck. So, uh, okay. Right, yep, everyone can see how good I am at dealing with cards. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is... Uh, choose a random number, just like we did in the prediction trick, where the might you know the the memory trick. I'm just going to do the same s s similar kind of technique, but this time in, I'm going to deal down. I'm going to s s choose the random number by getting the cards to pick it. So I'm going to go uh, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. And as I speak, if the card value matches the number I say, then I'll stop. Okay, so like ten nine they don't match so i keep going eight seven six five okay so the cards have picked the number five for us first off let's try another one ten nine eight seven six five four three two one okay we didn't get a success that time so i'll just cover that one up because we didn't get it working at all. Next one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Hey, that worked. Cool. And last one. 10. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? We've got um, the, the, the piles of cards have chosen the number, adding these up together, 17, 5 and 2 and 10. That's definitely 17. Okay, so 
I'm going to deal out another 17 cards and reveal the card that you chose, which hopefully one of us will have remembered. Okay, so <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I tell you what, I'm absolutely dying inside again because I am really worried that I've chosen and made a mistake here somehow. Okay. And the last card over is the seven of spades, which is the one you chose. I worked. I'm so pleased. <laughs> okay. So did you notice any similarities with the, the memorization trick? Um, a lot of counting. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I really can't avoid it. If I had skills, I wouldn't have to count. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess letting the cards kind of choose. Um, yeah, absolutely. Think... Yeah, no, you're spot on. It is because this is piles of 11 again. So here um, I've dealt down six cards and the top number is five. If we do six and five, I get 11. Here I've dealt down um nine cards to get to the two and add the two cards on there that i'm going to add because we went like this we went uh 10 add so add 10 cards there went one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then two cards here one two and five cards here one two three four five and then it brings up i've shuffled them up so it didn't come up again but we're putting out the right number of cards so that there's 11 in every pile there's 11 in this pile already because we've got the 10 we counted down and the one to cap it off and the trick is that when i was asking you to choose cards with me when we were randomly picking a number of cards i made sure that there were exactly nine cards um, that I picked, which means that the card that you pick, if I take off nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, and then put that on the bottom of the deck, okay, then our card is 44 from the top, so four piles of 11 cards gets us to the 44th card. <sighs> I reckon that's pretty good. I reckon we can probably stop there, do you reckon? Um, yeah, no, that was uh, really interesting. Um, do you want to have? Do you have any uh, links or a website that you want to plug? I do not. I'm just doing this for uh, for the fun of it. Um, I would like to say hi to uh, Leah, Ella, Toby, Charlie, Becky, and Stephen, who are hopefully all tuned in um, somewhere in Brisbane. <laughs> yes, uh, I, someone named Becky did say hello from sister in your chat in the chat. So, uh, oh, if that's cool. Named Becky, that uh, that could be cool. Oh, and now Becky is waving. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's going to send me abuse in a bit. I've left my phone somewhere else. All right. So, Sydney, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed um, doing this, and I've been so impressed. I mean, everybody else's maths has been so cool. I really have enjoyed those things. The thing that Peter did with that combinatorics that was amazing. That was very impressive. Um, yeah. What time are you back on? Because I'm looking forward to tuning in and watching you. Uh, three hours from now, I think. Okay. I should know that better. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck staying awake. All right. Uh, have a good night, Patty. Um, Thank you.